It is now in order to consider amendment number one printed in House Report 114-389. For what purpose does the gentleman from Tennessee seek recognition? To uh, address the amendment and ask for passage thereof. The clerk will designate the amendment. Amendment number one printed in House Report number 114-389 offered by Mr. Cohen of Tennessee. Pursuant to House Resolution 581, the gentleman from Tennessee, Mr. Cohen, and a member opposed, each will control five minutes. The chair recognizes the gentleman from Tennessee. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I rise in support of my amendment, which was made in order and which would make an exception to H.R. 1927's required showing for class certification for any claims brought by victims of a terrorist attack against the attack's per per perpetrators. We all agree that victims of terrorist attacks deserve justice and they should have the fullest opportunity to obtain compensation for any injuries they've suffered because of such attacks. Sadly, our history over the last generation has no shortage of examples of the kind of victims this amendment would help. From the 1983 bombing of the Marine Barracks in Beirut and the 1996 Towers bombing in Saudi Arabia to the downing of Pan Am 103 by Gaddafi's Libya, recourse to our courts has been one of the few ways the victims of terrorism have been given at least some opportunity to seek justice for the acts committed against their family members and them. I know Chairman Goodlatte shares my concerns for these victims, and I applaud him for his successful efforts to create a compensation fund for those victims of state sponsors of terrorism who receive final court judgments against those state sponsors. The program also compensates those held hostage in the U.S. Embassy in Iran in 1979. Some of these cases, the victims or their survivors pursued class actions against the state sponsors of the terrorist act. Yet under Section 2 of H.R. 1927, these victims may not have had the opportunity to pursue a class action in the first place. As noted during the general debate, Section 2 adds the new requirement that a named plaintiff prove as a condition of class certification that every putative class member suffered the same scope of injury. Not comparable, but the same scope. This requirement can be read to preclude a class action where, for instance, one terrorism victim loses his legs while another loses his arms as a result of some terrorist attack. Or maybe somebody isn't a direct victim of the terrorist attack, but hurt in the aftermath of the attack. In short, they did not suffer the same scope of injury. I note that scope can mean the same thing as extent as the bill introduced originally stated. Current rules, while requiring commonality of facts and law, does not require a showing of commonality and damages as a prerequisite for certifying a class action, as this scope of injury standard requires. It is rare that two class members suffer the exact same scope of injury, and almost impossible to prove this at the certification stage. Think about Boston. Some people lost a leg. Some people lost a life. Some people lost both legs. They couldn't be part of a class. The relevant inquiry is whether they alleged allegedly both suffered injury as a result of the same alleged wrongful act by the defendant. It's hard enough as it is to pursue class actions because of years of efforts by industry to make it more and more difficult. Sometimes in these terrorist situations, it's a, it's a different type of defendant. It's wrong to place the heightened burdens of H.R. 1927 on terrorism victims who seek justice for the acts committed against them. I would ask that this amendment be accepted by the other side because exception for victims of terrorism, and we all share in our hope that ter victims of terror get justice and that we don't put any more hurdles in the, the way of them successfully completing the track of seeking justice for them and, and, and their heirs, ancestors who might have been killed in those attacks. My amendment would offer them relief of these burdens, and I'd hope that the other side would accept it. Yield back the balance of my time. Chairman yields back.